Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. There has just been a magnitude 4.3 earthquake that struck here in the Los Angeles basin right near Fontana at a depth of 3.3 miles. This is 5.3 kilometers. And this in fact is one of the strongest earthquakes that has been registered in California for the past month. We see the epicenter right here, a bit of a burst of activity right near that epicenter with some magnitude threes as well. This is the 4.3 though specifically, and we see this aftershock there at 6.2 kilometers of depth. That's a magnitude 3.1. Then we also see here this 2.4, 3.0, 2.8, and 1.2. But this is important to point out because not only has it been one of the strongest earthquakes in the past 30 days, it's also occurring right next to the San Andreas Fault, which we see right there. And if we just consider the larger global context, we just had that magnitude 8.8 .8 megaquake off the coast of Kamchatka, Russia, that has been migrating south now towards Japan with its aftershocks. But there's been a massive release of energy along the Ring of Fire in the Western Pacific, here in the Eastern Pacific, there hasn't been that much slip. So the question a lot of people are asking is, is a big one about to strike California? Will there be a stress redistribution? That is unknown, but we do know that there is a high seismic hazard for California. So definitely be on alert if you live on the West Coast. This is going all the way up past Washington to Vancouver Island here because this seismic risk ex extends all the way to the Cascadia fault zone. And in general, you should always have 72 hours of emergency supplies. This would be water, food, a hand crank radio, because the earth does work in these ways where you will have stress release in one part and then there will be corresponding stress release in another. So I'm not saying that California is about to have an earthquake and that this magnitude 4.3 is an indication of that, but it is a good reminder that California is very seismically active. It is overdue for quite a few big ones, both in NorCal and in SoCal, and it very well could be gearing up for something larger based off of current earthquake trends. Here we see our intensity contours for this magnitude 4.3, as well as our did you feel it survey feedback and also historic seismicity for the area. So we zoom in here, these white circles are the historic seismicity, whereas the orange and red ones are the current earthquakes that are happening as a result of this magnitude 4.3. And so you'll notice that this area in particular does have some historic seismicity to it. And if you zoom out to more of California, you see of course uh, the fault lines expose themselves to San Andreas here, running up to the Salton Sea, going through there. Um, in general, we often see earthquakes off the San Andreas Fault, not directly on it, because those ones that are on it are the big ones that rupture a significant portion of that San Andreas Fault. And for people in the LA Basin, the intensity of this earthquake is only a magnitude 4.3. We see our intensity contours are pretty light, only in the three to four range. So some people may have felt the jolt, or maybe they heard a boom, just a quick up and down motion but we aren't seeing that many responses across the basin. We do have some areas here which are a little higher, for example, with the yellows and the greens. Most of them report an intensity that was quite mild. Uh, we do see that some of these higher uh, did you feel intensity markers were registered closer to the epicenter, which makes sense. Now let's check out the seismicity for California over the past week and month. If we zoom out, you'll see quite a lot more earthquakes now across California different fault lines get exposed, like up here near Ridgecrest, where there was that really powerful earthquake back in 2019. But if I switch this to only show earthquakes on the map, you'll notice that this 4.3 is the second strongest, this 4.5 there off the coast, where we had that magnitude seven earthquake in December of 2024, so close by. So no one really would have felt that, meaning that this 4.3 has been the strongest earthquake here for California in the past week. And in fact, we go to our 30 days, all magnitudes for the United States, we see that it is still right there near the top. 
though there also was a 4.3 earthquake here just south of the Salton Sea. And you see the bursts of earthquakes that occurred following that. And so that is likely to also occur with what just happened here in the LA Basin near Fontana. We're likely to see more aftershocks from this 4.3, but all of them of lesser magnitudes, magnitude three, magnitude two. There is a chance that this is a four shock sequence, about 5%, so that would lead up to about a magnitude five, which is a good shaker. That can knock down chimneys, cause some damage like that. But in general, California has been seismically quiet, you could say, in terms of a big one, as compared to what's been happening on the global scale, which is this magnitude 8.8 megaquake, the sixth strongest ever observed earthquake with modern seismic gear and the strongest since the Fukushima meltdown Great Tohoku earthquake of March 11th, 2011. So this was a big, big earthquake, one that I forecasted a few days in advance saying there was a high chance of there being a megaquake in that area. Lo and behold, that is what occurred. And this aftershock sequence here propagating down is quite interesting. Typically, it will just cluster around. This one is actively migrating. And we see that with our latest earthquakes here. We go down and we'll see this 6.2 that eventually will pop up. But you'll notice how many earthquakes there have been. A uh, tremendous amount of earthquakes. It's actually this one right here. This is the most recent aftershock that's significant in the magnitude six range. Look how far away it is from that epicenter. So there's been a tremendous drift of seismic activity going south from Kamchatka, showing that this whole plate boundary and the plate itself is under dynamic change at this moment in time. And technically California is connected to that and more directly than a lot of people realize because here, you have a mid-ocean ridge, you have active plate creation. And so the d dynamics are a little bit different as it relates to South America. But for this part of the ring of fire going up, you have a lot of subduction zones, you have a subduction zone there, and then it does eventually go into strike slip where they're going past each other, kind of allowing for this rotational movement almost. Uh, and so we are connected pretty closely to the dynamics that's unfolding here with Russia, and then also we had that 7.3 in Alaska on the 16th of July. And of course, you notice how many earthquakes in general happen in Alaska, California, lower magnitude. But is California due for a big one in the southern part of the state and also up in the northern part of the state? Absolutely, the Hayward Fault is uh, definitely locked, loaded, ready to go. San Andreas Fault, both northern and southern sections are ready to go. The question is when, I cannot tell you when that's going to occur. It's very difficult to forecast earthquakes, but I'll keep you up to date if you subscribe to the channel. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, I've been your host, Stefan Burns, wishing all of you well. I'll see you all in the next one.